Welcome to another fun episode of Photoshop Party. Today we got a guy by the name of Dennis Hammond going to be talking about how to make your landscapes and other stuffs much gooder. Um, we're going to do some Nick filters and some other fine stuff in Photoshop to kind of tweak them and make them look better. So I'm looking forward to this. I need my images to look a whole lot better. So Dennis, it's all yours. Well, thank you. Um, I'm just going to share here real fast. And hopefully I can get to the right place. All right. Well, I'm not promoting Sherry, but this is just something we're going to do here. <laughs> so for everybody. So, you know, um, this is something that I've been working on for a long time. And uh, when Nick first came out, um, I got, here's the, here's the one. I taught university college, black and white labs. And I thought Nick was one of those things that with gimmicks, I didn't want to be involved with gimmicks and all that stuff when it first came out like 25 years. I think it's the 25th anniversary of Nick. And uh, then I started looking at my time I spent doing things. Now, there's nothing that in Nick that you can't do in Photoshop, but now we all start doing actions. So we do work faster. So the whole thing is we start working fast. We decide how we're going to do something and we work on it and it makes life a lot easier. Well, one of the things that helped me in my black and white uh, photography, my sessions out there, my sessions or my scenic is that I shoot Canon and I um, I shoot raw and JPEG. And everybody goes, why? Well, there's a couple of reasons why, but the biggest one is, is because when I'm out shooting, I see something and I pre-visualize a scene. I see a scene that I think will be a good black and white. Because sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I'm out in the mood and i'm seeing this shot i'm going oh i wonder what this looked like but then you forget your vision maybe if you're on a trip for a week or two or whatever so i will just convert my camera quickly to monochrome and it converts the black and whites to uh um, then my jpegs to black and white so doing so it gives me a visual reference when i'm going back to the images and it reminds me that what my visualization was at that time was black and white now I go back and I can visualize later what I'm doing here. And a couple of weeks ago, Sherry and I were uh, went to speak in Arizona. And so on the way down, we went and shot in the Valley of Fire. And then coming back, we go, uh, we had so much fun, let's go back. And we went to do Sherry's portraits. And I said, well, and she gave me her consent to use this portrait. And this is Miss Sherry out in the Valley of Fire. So here's the thing is everybody goes, well, how do you get good black and whites? Because I'm just going to show you a lot of different ways i'm seeing people do black and whites so a lot of times i'm seeing people when i'm judging um i see people all they do is they go into black and white and they convert it to black and white of course you can adjust all you know, your reds and your things everything your filters but it doesn't quite seem to have the snap so you know there's the black and white method so then the other method i see quite frequently people tell me well i just go in to um um uh, channel mixer and i just click monochrome and now oh, sorry wrong one I was, see how excited i get um go to monochrome and then i have a monochrome image so that's good enough black and white for me well okay fine that's for some people that may work fine you know then if we go to the next way of black and white which i'm people tell me they they go to you know they they go into black and white and they go down to channel mix, okay, we did channel mixer, um, hue and saturation. So they go, well, let's just desaturate it. And for some people that's good enough, you know, and I, and I see that a lot. So the other way is, is that I use Nick, uh, Silver Effects too, and there's the new ones out there. So uh, there's ways you can keep it on the screen. I just keep in the fillers. I try to keep my real estate clean. So I go into Nick, Silver Effects too, and, uh, just does everybody here use nick i mean is yeah. everybody everybody pretty well use nick yes okay yeah. and so you know the thing that is is nick is amazing because with the new nick uh comes up and you have it gives you a lot of different things here that you can go and you it shows you all of them you can go and get some of the modern things that they just added uh it shows you the recently ones i just worked with and it you know, gives you some new in vogue. And this is the new Nick when you upgraded to give you a bunch of uh, presets and then the classic. So it goes back and so it starts showing you all the different things you can do. And then the vintage filters, which I don't use a lot because it's not something I particularly like. 
and then the favorites. And I, you can make a recipe and put it in there. But so let's just go back to some of like the ones Lisa used. And uh, I'm just gonna go with the neutral one because this is the one that comes up that they recommend. And so I, I grab Sherry. Now, I've, a lot of times people see this and all they see is the, the little bar on the left-hand side. If it's got a little diamond, you can click and open those bad boys up and it gives you a lot more things you can work with here. So, you know, I got Sherry over here and I can um, play with the lightness and tones. And you see already I'm opening up uh, some of the dress and things there. But, you know, I can go, okay, well, boy, I don't like how dark that's getting. This is one thing that uh, Nick has done in a lot of controls is add a control panel. And I can go over to this dress and I can hit a control and I can just get the area I want to play with. And you can see it up here and I can brighten it up. I can darken it down and I can darken them. This is these little areas I can play with. And I, if I want to see lighter or darker. Now let's say the same thing up here. Let's say I want to go up the rocks. So it grabs those tonal values of the rocks. And so let's grab these rocks here. And, uh, and I'm going to grab, you can grab the rocks, the whole thing, or just get the whole freaking thing. Um, but just, get, just to clarify, when you make a, a, a control point like that, whatever you click on, it's going to affect that tone all over the image where, where the, inside the little circle. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so it affects everything within that circle. So you know, so now you can see I'm hitting the dark and, sh and it's hitting just a little bit of sherry going down. So I can bring the whole bad boy down those rocks. And I see this a lot in competition. People bring too much to that. So the secret to a lot of that is if you decide to get some overlap, is that I really suggest to people once they get that, once that works on me here, you know, I have such a tough job going and photographing her. Guys, do I have a tough job or what? No. I love my job. Okay, so I make a layer mask, and then I will come up and grab the bee, and then I'll come up, and if I feel like maybe some of that went on her, I'll come up and just take, whoop, then you can come up and reduce the opacity on this as well, or you can reduce the opacity. Now, see, I'm getting detail and tone. And now I'm going back to the black and white in there. So you can see there's a lot of things you can do with there. So if we come back to these four images here. Come on, Dennis. You can see the differences in tonalities you can do with all the different. The different black and whites you can do and how you want to do them. So it's your choice how you want to play and mess around with them. Um, and what you want to do and get your tonalities and how fast you want to do and what direction you want to go with your imagery. Any questions? Okay, bunch of smart cookies. And you you um, can have this set up to make um, an additional layer and that way you can also do um, layer masking as well. I tried to show it, yeah. So, okay. So in so we do a lot of portraits as well. So I'm just going to open up the next one here. I had another one here. Um, same kind of thing here is this gentleman. I just did a business portrait for him. And uh, actually, we did part of a family session. And it's the same thing as um, he wanted to have a black and white for his office. So, you know, we want to just make sure that we, you know, like I said, I, I like mine just hung up the filters, going to Nick. And I just work through my stuff very quickly. It's interesting. Somebody the other day was telling Sherry and I that they did a landscape and it took them and a portrait took them 35 hours to work on an image. And I'm going like, oh my goodness. I just can't imagine working on taking that long to work on something. So you know you can work on things here. Now this is overexposed. Now this is going to be the structure. And this one thing I see a lot of people when I uh when I'm judging I see a lot of a lot of structure in the, in the people putting in there, and you can pull that stru structure. I see if I push it clear off, can you see what that's doing to the image? And then I can bring it back and make it softer and almost a soft white, a soft texture. Now, within that contrast, you can add, add more contrast to him. And this is going to be for publication. And so now I keep in tonalities in the whole image. I can play the highlights. And I can grab it so his face and watch his face. You can see his face, how the highlights are changing. And then the mid tones on the background as well. 
and then the shadows in the background, how they I can take them down as well and make it fit to their needs and what they want. So <laughs> Dennis, yes. a question. Uh, this is John. I'm familiar with brightness and contrast, but I'm not familiar with structure. What what does this, what is structure exactly? Or how, how does that affect the image? Okay. Structure look is kind of a um, contrast um, for texture. Um, it'll bring out texture. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's look at if I add a structure to him, watch what happens to the whole picture. See how it adds more contrast and almost like a grainy type. Can you see that, John? Yes. Yes. Thank okay, you. So, so yeah. now I'm adding structure to that image, and I'm seeing a lot of people will do that with their images try to make them graphic and old men and do things like that. that. And that's not something you want to do to a young lady. Right, right. Thank so, you. So, you know, there's just so many things in, with uh, all the uh, stuff you're going to hear now. Let's say you get this, all this done here and you want to come over here. You can come over here and you can do a custom and keep your own recipe. Say if you had to do a whole um, 50 employees, you don't want to remember all these numbers and things. You could just come here, do a custom recipe and put down Dennis's recipe for John's John's work. And then we have it that way. And then every recipe, you just come in, hit that custom recipe, and boom, you, you got the same thing every time without having to try to memorize and write all these numbers down. Now, one thing that you can do, now a lot of people don't know about, is that I can do toning on this. Let's say this gentleman says, well, geez, I should like to have a, a toned image. So now I can go into toning and I can add more strength and tone to the image. And so I can convert an image to a brown tone real easy. Now, there's a lot of other things too. That you can come up here and grab another filter and color filters and things like that. But one thing that gets a lot of people don't know about that you can do image borders. Now, this is kind of interesting. There used to be a program called uh, Edge Effects. And now they took some of these edge effects. Let's just grab that one here. And it's not one I'd probably choose, but you can see how you can do that. Now, once I drop that down, see edge effects comes in, image borders. Once I open it up, it gives me some more peripheral. So I can go to the size, how much I want to go on the edges and whites, how wide it's going to be with the spread on that, and then how clean it's going to be when you start looking at the, the cut of this. So you, you can add so many different things there, or you just come back up here and do the uh no border and just take the board up you can set you and play with a lot of different things here <laughs> if you want to do something really quick and fast and artistic um it just utilizing this tool as much as you can any Dennis, questions on that we have a question can you make selections in silver effects pro i just showed that yes so um right here okay so define what they mean by selection i mean I can do control points. Let's say I want to do his coat. And say it feels like I want to do more structure and it's going to come into his face. I know if you can see it down there. Can you see his coat mm -hmm. change structure? Now it's going to affect into his face a little bit. And you say you want to have more in there, but it's also affecting the background as well. It's so you affecting can make every tone that is within what you selected in that circle. Yeah, say I say I want to do the face instead. So I want to come over to the face. So I'd probably bring that the circle down, just do the face. And let's say I want to just do it a brightness or darkness. And you see now it's getting all the tone and everything in that same tone. And so yes, you can do selections within that. That's not really a selection though. Yeah, uh, not mean, selection. I guess like I did a lasso. Yeah, like a lasso or no, not in this. Oh. This is okay. just what you can see with the little circles. I guess I didn't understand the question. I apologize. Okay, any questions on the doctor here? You have that little step wedge down at the bottom. Does that, does that, uh, does that translate pretty well into the print? Okay, I get, Alan, okay, let me just go to the next one. Maybe we can go to the next one. I'll show you one here, another one. Okay, now, um, this one's kind of a fun one. Sherry will agree with me. This little gal, I had to crop it because this gal slash client, we can't keep her clothes on her. <laughs> I know it's a real tough job, guys, but you know, somebody's got to do it. And um, she was doing some modeling of things. So, you know, once again, I, I shot the shot 
uh, in black and white, and I did a high contrast black and white uh, on the JPEG, so I knew what I wanted, and then I'd come back, and then I just adjusted the, um, my RAW file after I adjusted and retouched it. So now I'm going to do something that's kind of fun, you know, just doing a high key. And you know, so now we just come in and do a high key. Hmm. And look how easy it is. Now we come in just, we can adjust the brightness. We can come in and put a little more contrast in her. If that's what you want. I can put, I don't recommend all that structure. So you can back that structure off. So this is something that's really popular with um, the young ladies right now. Of course, you have all the presets you can go through and you can walk through all these. Now, see, there's like a high structure, but then this is the natural. But I like the high key for this particular image. And, um, you know, then after I do this, just so you know, when um, I work on these and then Sherry, before we print them, um, she goes in and she will tweak out for the printing. So now, so we got a few things blown out. We could come back in and we can you know, pop in the shadows a little bit more, bring the shadows a bit more and work it out that way. So you can make, just take a really nice portrait that you've already designed out and create into a really high key graphic image um, very quickly and make it work out that uh, more for the client to buy. Um, can I can I yeah. make just a suggestion? Um, using structure on skin generally ends up making the skin look dirty. Um, so if you do use structure, I would mask it off of any skin areas. It just makes it look dirty and grungy. Okay. So any questions on how to do that? Uh, reference, this is John again, uh, reference the masking. Is that something you do out of Photoshop or is there masking within Silver Apex? No, there's not. No, the, it, I, it makes, you can tell, you can tell Nick to, to make another layer so that you can, you can um, do masking. Okay, thank you. Okay. When, when you, when you adjust in color effects, and I know a lot of things and there's, there's several different ways um, or contrast or different things, but how often, because I'm, I guess my question is this, I'm always afraid to push it 100%. Are you okay pushing it or how far do you push it? I know we've got to adjust it by the eye, but um, I really have always stayed away from pushing it all the way to the edge on one of the sliders. How do you I, feel about I, that? I very, very seldom ever push it past anywhere there. You saw how close I was on my sliders when I changed that. Sherry, do you want to address any of that? Um, for me, it totally depends on the image. Some images are going to have more. Some images are going to have less. It just depends on how it was shot, um, the contrast it already has or doesn't have, or, I mean, it just a bunch of different variables depending on how much I'm going to have or take away. Yeah, lost by eye and by our taste. And that's the thing is like when, when we judge that um, we see people doing things and it's not how we would do it. But you no, know, I'm seeing detail, you know, a little bit. It's got her face out. And thing doing this kind of look, I don't have to do a lot of retouching to her face because it washes her face out. And I don't have to go in and do a lot of that retouching. Now, I do see a lot of people do this, come in and um, I use Imagonics and um, this is what I see a lot in competition. And now, um, as I'm zooming this up, you can see it almost loses everything. If we come back here and you can see how it, it blurs everything. And this is something I really have a problem with and people do so much when they uh, blend that out like that. Okay, any questions? Okay, goodbye, Victoria. Okay, so we got one more uh, portrait here. We saw people do portraits. Um, so this, uh, a friend came for lunch, breakfast one day and he just stood there for breakfast. And this just is an interesting portrait piece. It was all natural light, just a kitchen light. And this is one thing I see a lot because people send images and it appears to be a little red and they're hard to get out, but I left it this way, even after I raw processed it. Because once, once I come into Nick, and uh, I do silver effects, <clears throat> excuse me. 
depends on how much structure. I mean, there's the high key now. See, it gives me, it brings up the last one I did. It brings up the last ones I had here. And so I want to come up here and I want to use, a, say we come back in here, we want to use something a little bit more with a dynamic range. Now, you can see what, if I start adding structure, what structure does the wall into him. And I'm seeing, I see this a lot in uh, competition. People bring this and, and instead of brushing it off the face and the body, they, they'll they leave it like that and it becomes very disturbing. So- And the and the wall is plaster. So that's why it's, it's looking like that. When you add the structure, it, it amplifies the texture. So you, know, you can see there's like 48 different ways of you can change this, this uh, uh, see this is turning it to a low key but then i can come up here and open it up a little bit more and then if i wanted to come back in and grab one of those control points come in grab grab his jacket now you can see you grab the little guy here you can come up just his jacket and i come back up and i can do it up here or i can do it down here as well there's two different ways and you say well i'm not sure if i like that so you can come up here and so you got a little screen you come up to you split the screen and Come on, yes. So you can come back and see if that's what you want. You can go back and forth across your image if that's what you want, or you can go side by side. I like to have as much real estate look at the image as I can. Sherry likes this way here, and I prefer this way. But if you want to go back and look, you can certainly go back and, and uh, see that as well. Then you can go back and hit compare what there was before you did the shot. And you know, this is an easy way to easily look and see if, if what you're doing is where you want to go with an image. Dennis, can you give an example of where, of how you do the masking out? You do some effects on one and then. Yeah, mask. give me a second here. I got an image. I think I'm going to help you out with that. Okay. So I grabbed a couple of different things here. Okay. Okay. So here's a scene that I grabbed. You know, this is one of the things that I was talking about. So this has just been processed out and it appears to be kind of flat, okay? So what I do is I actually go into, um, I use color effects, Not I'm not gonna do Nick yet because I'm gonna do um, color effects. And one of my effects is in Nick. Um, yeah, well, it's one of the part of it. So um, I've already, you, you can see I've already did this. So I come into brilliance and warmth is one of my favorites. So now I've automatically warmed it up into the colors here. And you can see how blue it is now and cool. So you can go in down the different um, one, one you want warm to cool, whatever you want to go. So let's, let's just go here and we got a little blue and then we can see so you can back to saturation. Once you even do that there, you can come over and customize it to your own self, whatever you want to do here. Now that may be a little blue and blue or not in Idaho with a, a spring runoff, the fall runoff, it looks a lot like that. But you know, this is almost too warm. See, there's clear the sliders, Kevin. I think that's too much and, and there's too much saturation. So usually you see me down you know, a little bit less than that. Now, one thing a lot of people do is that they'll stack the filters. I prefer not to stack them. You can add a filter like this and then you can come get hit back once you've selected it go back and then you can come back and you can do say like total contrast and it, there's another one here so it really makes it uh catches up the highlights you can bring them down there again you can bring all those down uh you can bring your saturation up on those a little bit more if you choose to do so um so you can stack them there but the problem is if you come back and want to start masking or change things if you got five or six filters in there it it causes a challenge in my opinion. Sherry, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I, I generally don't like to stack filters because nine times out of 10, I'm going to go and mask something out on each one. And if you add filters, you can't go back and individually do each one. You're only doing what it ends up with, with all the stack filters. Yeah, if you got all the stack filters here, you mask globally, not individually. And your brilliance and warmth, could you define what perceptual saturation was? Okay, go back on brilliance and warmth. Okay, this is just what they've named it, but they've got it two, three times over. You can see how much more saturated, and especially in the shadow areas it's gotten. And you can look at, when you start looking at those, okay, there's number two, 
Can you, I don't know if you can see very clearly. I'm gonna go back and forth those a couple of times. You can see how the saturation has decreased. The warmth is kicked up here on one. And on two, the warmth is kicked up, uh, the saturation is kicked up more warmth. It's what they've named them, but you can see how the tonalities have changed there. So if you take the slider on the right, on the far right, perceptual resaturation, just below where you're at. Yeah, now, I can take it, I can take no, it below, down to black. Below, that's saturation, below that is perceptual. You have warmth and then, yeah, that slider, I, I, I wish I could define what that really is doing. Well, you can see it almost is taking a lot of the color out already. See, oh, see the saturation, see how saturated it is right now. And the perpetual saturation, just watch it. If I kick it clear up, look how snappy it gets. And if I take it back down, it almost goes to a monochrome. Can you see the difference? Yeah, I wish I could define what's happening in the picture. Besides. Well, I'm looking at the highlights and the look of the water and look at how it's it's going from the blue, it's going really saturated down to the blue. Now the blue is going to blue is more of a monochrome. That's why I, I don't mess with that in a lot. But as you can see there, if you go to the go to the cool colors, that takes it way down to the cool. You know, they've got these named and there's a lot of these things I don't mess with because I just know they're going to mess up the style that I do, I work with. So, you know, if I just, there's increased saturation, there's neutral, and then there's the warm tone, which is a little warm. Now, this is, this is very nice, just as it is right now. So, but I'm going to go into one more thing here before I go back. There was control points in there, and <clears throat> Sherry, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, I was, I don't know what you just said. I was responding to a question. Oh, um, the, que the question was, so if you stack filters, are you just creating a layer in PS for each effect? No, when you stack layers all in one, um, at one time, it's only going to give you the combination of all of them. So it's only going to give you one layer with all of the stacked layers. That's why when I do it, if I'm going to use more than one uh, filter, I'm going to do one filter, adjust it, and then another filter and adjust it. That way you get to adjust each individual filter. If you stack them, you only get one layer. That's get cool. one output. Yes. So here's Vivesa. Now this is one of the coolest things that they did a couple of years ago. They put Vivesa in. So I just grabbed, okay, I thought those rocks up there were a little bright. So I just grabbed those rocks and I brought that that little circle down so just getting those rocks and then i just come here and and just globally i can just tone down the rocks now say i can add another one here i would say i want this water over here toned down so i come down here and get my little circle and i want that water toned down just a little bit and i bring down the tonality that but no that white just doesn't grab me no i'm just being emphasizing here I say you say, well, I'm not sure about that white if I really like what's happening with all my little rapids right there. So I'm grabbing a global with that. And then I'm going to just maybe bring my whites down in my rapids a little bit. And then watch the structure in the rapids when I hit the structure, when I bring that up, how you can see how it adds a lot more ripples to the structure there. And you can kick in a little more contrast if you so desired. So you can, it keeps all these points. So you can go back and adjust. We'll say, well, now I feel like maybe after I adjust their thing, I need to bring that back down. So you can go back and adjust your points as long as you're still on that page and go on there. Any questions on that so far? Okay, so this is because black and white, what black and white looks for, black and white looks for contrast and tone. And if it's very flat, it feels like it ain't gonna work for us. So now I got, so now you see, I got color effects, I got Vivesa, I stay in the top one, and now color effects also has a black and white range as well. Let's, let's just go back to this black. They have, um, I hear Sherry typing. <laughs> color fix four actually has a uh, black and white conversion you can do here. I choose not to do those. Wow, look at that, the, the, it double stacked. It went back to the first ones I did. You can do some freaky stuff here and forget you did. Now I'm going to go to back to Silver Effects 2. 
Pro. And now again, this looks a little muddy, but I like I like some of these water shots and little things, kind of the darker tones, and I can come up and I can brighten things back up. I can add a little more structure to the whole the whole scene. And this is the way I like my style. Okay, so once once I get there, I'm happy with what's going on. Let's say, well, gee, Dennis, I should like to see what happens if you put a border on that. So now you can do you can go back and test the border. You, you can't do actions, add your own border. These are the presets in there. So you can play with these and uh, if, if that's what you decide to do. But there again, I can come into this, add another control point. And that's a wonderful thing that I can come back into control points and say, I want that, that one a little brighter. See, I can, I can that whole tonal range that of those areas right there, that tonal range, it's going to brighten those up right there. and it'll lighten that series up and everything else is going to go dark. So now you can play with, you can just have numerous ways you can adjust an image for your taste. Now I must caution you that when I work on these and I see these in um, competitions, so many times they're beyond the range of normal that I would feel that they are. Okay. Anything else on that? Anybody got a question? Sherry, do you have anything you want to add? Um, somebody asked to for you to do a layer adjustment. Okay, let me do one here coming up. Okay. I just grabbed a cup here. Now, I, I know down in, uh, we do a lot of fall colors and things here. And um, so this is just a normal fall scene we got there. I processed it out. Now, one thing is that you can play with these, this freaking program so much here that um, you say, oh man, I feel like I, um, I miss the colors, I miss the time of year. So I Brent really won't stand there. So I can come in and add the saturation more in there. Oh, but I really want to have something um, more like fall colors. So I can come in and I can cheat and I can do fall colors and out of here. And then there's a, a method you can go in here and you can drop down over here. And there's actually been times we've had family sessions. We've missed the fall colors or just before. And they go, we want fall colors. And then I go in and I can adjust the background and mask them out. And I can adjust, you know, enhance the foliage, make it brighter. I can make it more orange. You know, you can do whatever you want. So there's just that filter you can do if you, if you feel like you want to play with that. The other thing is, is that I have a lot of use for the graduate neutral density filter. Now, a lot of people will you know, put a filter on and run it so it runs real top, hard across the top. But if you notice, on graduate neutral density filters, they have an upper and a lower. And I can take it up, I can bring it back down. So instead of vignetting, you just make your eye uh, just focus in the center point here. So it's not a vignette. See, there's the local, there's the lower tonality. And then I can slowly bring that up. And then I can blend that. It's hard to see on this, but you can blend it up in there in the center a little bit more. Now, now we got the neutral dense on this. I might just add on this one just so we can have for quickness of time come back and hit total contrast and there i can come back and this is a little softening as a little softer as opposed to this is really strong on the contrast and you can come back on the saturation on those guys and uh, blend it back a little bit more even softer if you'd like so there's a lot of things you can use the same filters a lot of people they say well you're not using the neutral density you graduate neutral density for mountains no but i'm Bringing the tone as your eyes are focused into this point, and you can't tell the difference what it's going to be there. And again, you can you know, look at the what I did here and go on, Dennis. Helps if I can grab it. And not, there we go. And you can see, I just, you can see the difference in the whites and the tones. Any questions there? You need to do a layer adjustment. Well, I didn't put a layer on this, Sherry. I will do one on the next one. I'm gonna show how to do the layer just on this next one, okay?
now this is one a spot that uh is that by share uh from sherry's home where we were teaching at georgia school um a year ago and um it was like two oh, years ago three years ago it's been that long holy smoly well two years ago because it was right when covid started well this is a old mound that the indians have got some burials in so there again i did the same thing Okay, now it still get, brings up the same brilliance and warmth. So I know you can click that off and if you want to start from scratch and the brilliance and warmth, and you know you can come up and warm and creature saturation. Uh, there's that perpetual saturation that somebody just asked about and you see how it really, I think it dings the colors almost out of range in my opinion on a lot of things. So if we come up here, because it was a, a really overcast day, it was a morning, it was raining, it was raining on someone taking a shot, but I want to get the clouds. Now I could do a couple things is I could do the clouds um, and use a variable neutral density filter. And then you gotta be careful about how much it gets down in here. And one thing is when I'm doing variable the neutral density, so I'm gonna use the strong dark sky. So now I brought the clouds back, but see, I'm seeing I'm coming back into the trees in here. You can see if I bring it up and I'm coming back into the trees and then the lower tonalities, you can see how I'm lighting and darkened. You can lower the tonalities there where it's going there. And I wanted to keep the sky. But if I come up here and I don't like, I think it's too strong. As soon as it works up here. Okay. The layer just might come here and I can just, I can bring that down and make it work so i can bring all the all that down on nick down what i feel like if i may did it too much and so i can bring it down if i feel like the clouds are too much but say i feel like that's where i was but i still feel like this maybe needs to be work so i'd still would come in here with a brush much strength as you want and i can blend out so that, that comes out more, a little bit more, but you can see how the background's starting to come back more. So it, it's not, I'm just doing this real dramatic so you guys can see. And this is very fast. I'd probably be more astute if I was working on this image. And there you can add that there with the layer adjustment. I'll say, you say, oh, I wonder how much it's gonna be if I go full strength, there's full strength. And then you can do a layer adjustment there. Sherry, is that what they were looking for? I, well, that's a layer adjustment, yeah. Well, what I was looking at for in particular, and I guess what you have to do on it is, if you're going in, say, uh, Soraflex Pro, you go in, make some adjustments, you save that as a layer, go back to the original, make the other adjustments, put that in another layer, and then mask each of those layers based upon what you want to bring out on that layer. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, there's something else here. I'm going to just try this. I haven't done it on this one because it feels a little flat. When you get into hey, the filters, you could also hit the brush down next to the OK and cancel, and then paint in where you want to paint it in. Yes. To Who the said left somebody asked for me? Yes. Yeah. Um, when you do that, does it create automatically all the time a, a layer mask? A mask? Every time you do a nick, every time you do a nick, it makes another uh, layer there for it you. It's a layer. You have to make it a mask. Uh, okay. I thought there was a way where it brings up the mask automatically on the layer every time. Is there a way to have that happen? I have no idea. I don't know what. Oh, so here's something interesting. Around. I just want to show. So I, I have all the color stuff here. And this is happens. Something's really contrasting. I was just going to mess with this. So you got I make another layer, a mix layer. And then I can just do a soft light overlay. And now it's added more contrast. So if I take that off, look at the difference in the contrast of that image. So you wow. can add if you got a really flat image, I can come in and let's say I, I want to keep that. I'd want to do a soft light. Say I want to multiply. You can see how much darker it is. So I usually use like soft light or over light, something like this. Let's go back to soft light. And then I just hit over light. And then, so I still keep my color image, but see if I, there's that before Nick and before I add the Nick with the contrast and there's without that. And then you could again, you could you know, lose the layer mask and bring back how much you want to bring into it again. 
So there's just a way. So if you took out the sewer effects, Mac, and the color effects, you can see how flat it was, and you don't have any sky in there. I know we're blowing through this stuff. This is, you know, a lot of stuff in an hour. Does this add any noise? I know when you go and you darken an image using curves and things, sometimes it adds a lot of noise. Do you ever notice any noise added in? No, I don't see any noise there. Well, it depends on the image. If I've, there's if there's noise in the image to begin with and you use anything like tonal contrast or structure or detail extractor, it's going to add it. Um, so if you have it in your original, you'd want to run um, a noise filter on it first so that it doesn't accentuate it when you do use those filters. Yeah, the detail extractor she's talking about, um, we see this a lot as well, that people will pop this bad boy in there and you can see what it does, how it really, I see this a lot in competition and people put a lot, so this is default, but then this is really dramatic. And believe it or not, I see this kind of look all the time. I um, almost never use any of the those other ones except the, the the very top one, and then just adjust it. I don't use the the wild crazy ones. Uh, Nick Nick has a noise. Uh, yes. Um, well, you we, we have sewer has a, a noise filter. I don't like it. Um, I use um, the Topaz denoise yeah. AI okay. denoise. I like it um, actually a whole lot better than I do Nix. Okay. Yeah. So we do a blend of different things and put that together. <clears throat> so you can see each time I do a different thing on Nick, it cre created a different uh, a different layer for Nick on everything that I did there. Any questions on that? With Nick, you do have to be careful because sometimes it will cause um, ghosting around the edges. So you got to mm -hmm. keep an eye on that. If you really push the structure and push uh, the process, now see if you zoom this up, um, I don't see any around the, my edges when I brought that sky down on there. I don't see any of that on, on my edges. And I think we was talking about a lot of times when people push that down so much in structure and contrast. It has that, a halo. And there'll be a halo across all the mountains and across this little thing here. And that's a telltale sign that what I'm seeing is that they've pushed the, the contrast and structure too far, but see, I don't see any of that on my image here whatsoever. Mm. Now, let's say you come in here real fast. You go, well, I still don't feel those mountains are strong enough. So you can come back in there. You can come back to Viveza. I'm just doing a real dramatic thing here. Okay, sorry. I'm going to just pop this in here. Because that was the last one. and add a little more structure to those clouds. You can see what I'm doing, those clouds. Everybody can see that, what I'm doing? Yep. Okay, so I can, I can use this graph over here or I can use it over here as well. So once you've done that, you can come back in and you can go back and you can adjust each layer separately like Sherry was talking about. And once again, you may have to come back in and do some masking things because of how it, it worked in there but if i took that off you can see the clouds how they the clouds just don't have the structure in them like they did a minute ago but it doesn't create any more noise by doing it it can if you push it too far or add too much structure in there, it will add noise that that's why i was mentioning if if you feel your image has noise in it go ahead and do a, a noise reduction otherwise if it's there it's it's gonna make it stand out okay Okay, we got about 10 minutes left. I'm gonna, Sherry's got something, she, it's not Nick, and Sherry's got something she wants to show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna stop sharing and maybe if I can stop share. And Sherry, you're gonna have to share now. Okay, I'm gonna share something real quick. Um, it's not Nick, but I think it's something everybody needs to see. Because the reason why is because I just saw, I just, critiqued a lot of images for PPA. And I told Sherry, I go, man, there's somebody needs some lessons on how to, to fix hairs. Um, this is uh, just a, a Photoshop thing. Um, and it's super simple and I've been using it forever, but I'm always amazed at, at people who say, how did you do that so fast? 
and I use um, Dust and Scratches filter in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to move this bar out of my way. Um, I'm going to go to filter, noise, dust and scratches. And you see how all those little hairs just disappeared? My radius is at nine and my threshold is seven. Now these are two numbers that you're going to have to play around with and it depends on your image. It depends on how thick or thin the hairs are, depends on um, how much noise or grain there is in an image or, or how sharp or how focused, focused your image is. And if I, if I up my threshold, you begin to see a little bit more of the hair. So for um, this particular image, I think it was on seven, it was um, a good spot uh to to do it so i'm going to click okay then i'm going to go to my history palette and click the little camera it's making me a snapshot i'm going to put the little brush next to the snapshot that means that's what i'm going to be working from i'm going to back up in my history to before i did the dust and scratches now i'm going to use my history brush set to normal at 100% and then just brush over all those little stray hairs. I know people are shocked and they say, oh, I spend hours and hours and hours doing this. And I'm thinking like, why when you can do this and it's super easy. Now, sometimes there's gonna be hairs that are thicker than what this is gonna help. And then you go in and retouch it however you need to. Um, but this does the bulk of the work for you. And all you need to do is use your history brush. And that was just that fast. So another thing I'm going to use um, for this is spots on a jacket. Now, I've got people that say, oh, yeah, that would take me hours using the clone brush or the healing brush to do this. Same principle with this. I'm going to go back to filter noise, dust and scratches. Sherry, you're full screen. You can't see anything on the screen here. Huh? I can't see anything on your screen. It just looks like the background. I'm sharing my screen, so I don't, does nobody else see anything? I don't see it. We just see the background. So you might want to unshare, then reshare again. Stop share. Share screen. Oh, I switched images. I bet that's why. His daughter. Okay. Well. Now, can y'all see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go back to filter, noise, dust and scratches. And I'm going to play around with my threshold. What I don't want to do is if there's any texture in this jacket is completely wipe out the texture. Um, so I'm going to take my threshold back down a little bit. So that looks good right about there. I'm keeping the, the texture of the, of the coat and I just got rid of all the spots. So again, I'm gonna take a snapshot of this state. I'm gonna put my history brush next to that state, then go back to where you can see it all. And I've got my history brush and I'm just gonna brush it all out. Now you're going to have different settings depending on your image. You can't really see a whole lot of texture with this. So the material itself, you can't really see a weave, but look how fast I just did that. And I know people that say they do this and it takes them hours. Um, so. And it doesn't affect the, uh, the wrinkles of the shirt or I mean the jacket or anything just it's the dust right. that, that's where you play around with that threshold number. Now here's, I've got another one here. I'm going to stop sharing again because when I change images, it's, you won't see it. So I'm going to go back. I think that's the kid I want. Yeah, you see his, the, you can see the weave in his jacket really well. So now I'm going to go back and do the same thing. I'm going to go to filter, noise, dust and scratches again. 
the see the setting that I had for the one jacket that you couldn't see the weave, it wipes it out. So I'm going to take the threshold up and then just play around so you can still see the weave. Can, could you see the difference when I took the threshold number up? Yes. So I click OK. I'm going to take a snapshot, put my history brush next to the snapshot, and then go back. So it's just enough to get rid of the little spots and keep the texture. So that's this is where you, you play around with uh, the, the threshold number. I generally keep that first number at 9. That seems to be the sweet spot for all of it. But here's the before. And here's the after. We kept the weave. We kept the texture of the weave, um, but gave it just an, enough of the dust and scratches to get rid of the white spots. Did, so it, do any, did it do anything to the rest of the photo, to his face when you did that? Yeah, I'll actually use that a lot, um, de depending on on the image. See, he's going to need a little bit more because what I generally use that for is like the stubble or little bitty blackheads. So I'm going to go in and uh, take that threshold down until I see that start to go away. So I click OK. Click the camera. You have to be real careful with this, with these numbers, because if you do it too much, see how you see how you're 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 keeping the the integrity of his, his skin intact is just getting rid of those little spots. Now, if I were to go too much, <clears throat> like say here, you mush him up and it gets way too soft. So you you want you want to really pay attention to that threshold number and make sure you're not making it too soft. And in this and the same thing with with the stray hairs. If you've got a, a real textured background and you're getting rid of, of stray hairs, then you don't want you don't want to to get a threshold so low uh, that it's gonna you're gonna see some soft mushy up against super textured. Um, background. Does that make sense? Yeah. So for acne, do you prefer this over um, the spot healing? Prefer prefer it over what? The spot healing brush. It de it, it depends. Um, pretty much the only thing that I use um, the this healing that not the healing but um, oh, healing brushes for are small little spots. Big blemishes is still going to leave a red spot. And you see, like it did right there. So you're still going to have to go back and do that. But what this does is takes away tiny little, tiny little blackheads and uh, like right here and stubble. It's not going to take care of big blemishes. See how it still keeps the, the skin texture without mushing it out. So the higher the threshold number, the more texture you keep. Right. The lower, the lower, the more mushed out it gets. Cool. So that's my quick and easy tip. Hey, Sherry, when you uh, when you click the little square next to the uh, uh, snapshot, is the history brush automatically there, or do you have to? Yes, that whatever snapshot you have. The brush next to that is what your history brush is going to go back to. Okay. I think what he asked here, if you click the history brush, if it automatically selects that as your tool on the left hand side. I think that's what he asked. No. Yeah. No, you have to select the, the history brush. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, we kind of give you guys a plethora of a lot of different things today. Way cool. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah fun. Great. I, I even learned a little bit. <laughs> Any chance you could take just a second and describe the history brush? I, I just haven't ever worked with it. Um, the history brush is um, well, you have to have a history state, and you can either use it as a snapshot or you can your um your history palette 
like say you let me let me go back to screen sharing again you can take a snapshot which is this little button here and it'll add sherry um, you're not showing it you got to reshare or something something's not sharing okay it's got the green box around it yeah is it not showing your tools either it's just going up to the zoom of the kid again. Okay. Do you see it now? No. Oh. There you go. There you go. Okay. So you can take a snapshot like I did here. And it comes up here at the top of the, the history palette. Mm -hmm. How did you, you take the snapshot? There was just a little fast. Click the camera at the bottom. Ah, okay. I take a picture. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm really going to exaggerate this so that you can really, really see a, a difference here. So he's really mushed out. And say, for instance, I like this and I want to make it a history state. I'm going to make a snapshot. It shows up right here. So I'm going to hit my um, history brush and make that the state I want it to brush back to. So I'm gonna back up in my history to before I did that. And let's just say I wanted to, to brush over his skin. I've got my history brush and I've got it set to 100%. And my history brush is set at the state where I blurred it all up. So this is where I'm gonna come in and brush. Mm. Or, you don't even have to use um, a snapshot. I can say, for instance, go back in time and bring back in. See, I'm, I'm not in these little snapshots. I just went back up in history and set my history brush at another state. I can do that as well. So it's wherever you set your history brush to. You can make a snapshot and do it, or you can just go to your, your history, um, your list of steps. In your so you can history. go back to your snapshot, the original one, and start from that area. Then. Okay, yes. what now? There you go, okay. You can go back to the beginning where it's D DSC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so fact, I'm, I'm way down here at the bottom and I don't like anything I've done here. I've got my history set back to the very original when I opened it and then just bring it all back in. Okay. When else do you ever, when else do you ever use a history brush? Uh, uh, I mean, it's, I'm sorry, a snapshot. When else do you take snapshots for? I take a snapshot. Uh, like if I do a lot of painting, um, I do uh, portrait paintings for a lot of photographers and I'm coming back and I'm doing the Photoshop stuff, getting it ready to print. If say I, um, did uh, a particular color balance and I didn't like what it did for another part of the image, I'll use the history brush to go back to the state where it wasn't that color and mask, or not really mask, but just kind of go back in history um, and <clears throat> take it from that state. Okay, can, can you uh, rename the snapshot so you can keep track of what you've done? I think you can rename it. I just never do. Yeah, you can rename it. Just oh, double cool. click on it or right click on it. I usually don't have a zillion snapshots like this. I'm only usually, usually working with one. And, and now, I, and, and just the tip, the, this is the history palette, not a layers palette. These will not save. You close this out, it, they're all gone. Oh. Uh. When you close the file, it, they all go away. Yes, your snapshots go away and your entire history list your goes away. History. But one other good thing about a snapshot is it adds zero file size to the file. Right. They're but, great for showing before and afters too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. But just, just remember the, this whole history list here, when you close it out and reopen, th these are gone. They, they, these do not save. <laughs> Yeah, cool. I heard some old dangs going on in there. <laughs> well, in a Somebody couple of weeks. Somebody asked me recently, how, how do I get 
how do I get all that back? And and I was the bearer of bad news. You don't get it back. Once you close the image, they're gone. Kind of a good thing, bad thing. In a couple of weeks, we will do the history brush and the art history brush um, in more detail. So look forward to that. Yeah. Next week could be <laughs> filters. The main thing I use it for is is what I just showed you for the stray hairs and for um, little tiny skin imperfections. Hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, it'd be great for dog hairs too, I bet. Oh yeah, uh, the, the, the seniors um, and also the girls with the drapes. Um, in the South, um, they still do uh, black tux and, and black drape. And the same thing, um, cat hair, dog hair, you name it, all over these black velvet or these black tuxes, and, and it all works for it. Well, that's when you hold a cat against your black clothes, that's when you need to have it or a dog. That's why you need to clean all the hairs off. Yeah. Do it before you shoot the picture, not that after. That would be preferable, but that would not <laughs> I find, Ideally, I, that's how we want to do it, right, Mike? Yes, sir, buddy. I, I finally but, learned that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't learned that. I'm still trying to learn, so... Well, cool. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. Roger, oh. Dane.